This Holy Week, I'm hoping to share with you all um, uh, some wonderful works of art which speak to us about the meaning of Christ's pos cross and passion for us. And I want to begin with an image of the Madonna and child. And you might think, oh, that sounds very much like Christmas. And of course, to Christmas, the Madonna and child image certainly belongs. And yet, uh, even in those images, there is a deep connection with the cross and passion of our Savior, which I want to bring out by looking at a very special work of art today. When you look at the uh, great Madonnas, images of the Madonna and child that begin to appear in such large numbers in Italy in the 12th and 13th century, in places like Siena and Florence, uh, they are very much uh, following uh, the Greek or Byzantine style. And from that Greek and Byzantine style, they inherit an air of tenderness, but also melancholy. The Virgin is pensive, thoughtful, gravely serious. And as I say, her mood is certainly tinged by one of melancholy. She seems to foresee or at least have an intimation, the son who's been so joyfully born to her and whom she now embraces in her arms has been born in order to die. It's a very deeply moving aspect of those images in Madonna and Child. It's not simply a kind of sentimental picture. There is a way in which we're looking deep into the mystery of God's purpose already begun. Michelangelo, of course, addressed this theme of the Madonna and child in a very striking way, a very famous way in the great work of art that's now in St. Peter's Rome, the Pietà, in which Mary cradles her dead son after he's been taken down from the cross, cradles him in her arms uh, across her lap. Uh, it's, uh, of course, and there we look at that image and we think back with poignancy to the images of her dandling the little baby in her arms. But the work of art I want to look at today by Michelangelo is not the Pietà, but probably his very first surviving sculpture. He did it when he was about 15. Uh, it's now in the Casa of Buonarroti, the family home in Florence, and it is a a uh, tablet, a panel, about a little bit more than a foot wide, uh, almost two feet tall. And uh, here is a photograph of it. If you're looking at the video, you can see this image here. And uh, what you see here is, uh, however dimly in reproduction and across the medium of social media, is an extraordinary technical masterwork by someone who is only a teenager. It is the very difficult art of very low relief sculpture, what's called relievo schiacciato in Italian. You know, flying high is pretty easy. It's flying low that really tests the pilot. And likewise with sculpture, it is extraordinarily difficult to uh, carve as if you're painting, to produce an illusion of three dimensions when in fact, the depth of your carving is just millimeters thick. This astonishing technique was uh, pioneered by Donatello, uh, the illustrious forebear of, of uh, Michelangelo as a sculptor in Florence. And here, indeed, uh, Michelangelo is working in a very Donatellesque vein. He's showing that he can do what Donatello does too. And in fact, there's many motifs here that recall Donatello. And yet there's also something uniquely uh, Michelangelo-esque, something that belongs to that impetuous, ardent spirit alone. The image indeed is of a Madonna and child. She is uh, in profile, turned to the left. Uh, he is in her arms, his head buried at her breast. Uh, to the left of the picture, uh, we see a, uh, a staircase this picture is known as the Madonna of the Stairs, with some children playing near the top of it with what looks like a piece of cloth. And she herself is seated on a great big square block, 
at the bottom right of the image. This is not only a te technical masterwork, but also its iconography is extraordinarily rich and dense. As in those earlier Byzantine-influenced images of the Madonna and Child, the Madonna here is pensive, grave, serious. She's looking beyond this present moment and looking beyond to the unfolding of God's purpose in the passion and death of her son. And what that purpose is, is indeed foreshadowed by the figure of Christ himself. For an infant, he possesses a Herculean physique, We're reminded of the full humanity which he took on and the heroic labors which we, he would undertake for our salvation. But his head is buried indeed at her breast, as if to seek not only nutriment, but refuge there. And his right arm hangs slackly and loosely behind his back, as indeed it would in his death. And so we have here a foreshadowing, uh, merely by body language, of the work, the labor, which this young Hercules has come to accomplish. The stone, the great cubic mass upon which um, the, the Virgin sits, reminds us that he is the sure foundation, the stone that was rejected, but was made the cornerstone by God, on which he built his church. And the stairs on the left of the image, they recall to us Jacob's ladder, a stairway reaching from earth to heaven, on which angels, the little children here, ascend and descend with the messages and errands of God. And these angels playing with that piece of cloth, perhaps that is indeed the shroud for his burying. But we're reminded that in the cross, Jesus erected a ladder, a stairway reaching from earth to heaven, or rather from heaven to earth, that by faith in him, we may ascend from this realm of sin and death to the realm of light and righteousness and life immortal. It's a very powerful image and one that I think speaks deeply to us about uh, the passion and death of Christ because it reminds us that Christ was incarnate of the Holy Ghost and born of the Virgin Mary, took upon himself our flesh, our human nature in its entirety, body and soul alike, not only that he might suffer for us in it, but also that he might rise for us in it. He becomes partaker of human nature, that human beings may become partakers of the divine nature. I want to conclude with a collect from the prayer book, which begins together all these themes, the collect for the Feast of the Annunciation. You can find it on page 235. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection. To the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen.